iOS 7 is finally here and it is way different. Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocket Now and this is Hands On with iOS 7 on the iPhone 5. Let's get to it. So we are looking at Beta 1. This is a developer preview. The final version will be out in the fall in a few months, three or four months for everyone to download. But we wanted to give you a look at what iOS 7 is like using it because there is a lot here, guys. It goes really, really deep. So even here, starting on the lock screen, swipe to unlock is no longer just on the bottom. You can swipe to unlock from anywhere along uh, the lock screen. And when we do a swipe to unlock, we have a new animation to go to your home screen. It's a subtle little touch, but again, it just shows that everything in iOS 7 has been redone. So if we swipe to unlock, again, two icons float in first, and then everything follows behind it. We've got all new fonts. We've got a thinner, skinnier, kind of cleaner looking font here. We've also got a new color palette, uh, which some people are not going to like. It's a neon color palette. And you can really tell down here on the phone and the messages icon, it is just this bright neon green uh, that you that you might have seen in a storybook when you were a little kid. Uh, speaking of little kid, these icons are so incredibly simplistic. Some people think, and, and it is my opinion, that that they look like they've been haphazardly designed. I mean, look at this Safari icon. Look at the settings icon. I mean, there's a point at which you might go a little too extreme in making things simple and clean, but there's a lot to iOS 7 that is really quite beautiful. Let's jump into the settings, which has been totally redesigned. Settings was getting really ugly in iOS 6 and below. And so we've got a much more cleaner look here. Everything is as you'd expect it. Uh, everything is where it's been before, but there are some new settings I want to go over. The first thing I want to show you is brightness and wallpaper. So if we go to choose wallpaper, and Apple now has dynamic wallpaper, also known as live wallpaper, which Android has been doing for years, of course. And right now there are only two to choose from. While we're in the screen, I want to show you something that's really cool. We get this back option, which has been in iOS 6 for a very long time, but new to iOS 7 is the ability to swipe backwards. Let me, let me show you that again. Just a really handy gesture for one-handed usability. And this is present throughout the entire operating system, whether you're in messages or you're uh, making a new bookmark in Safari, and there is that back icon. You can always do the swipe, and you can even do it repeatedly to go back throughout all of the settings that you're going through. Now, I'll go, I'm going to go back in wallpaper one second because Apple's doing a cool trick with the wallpaper. I'm going to go to stills, and I'm going to choose this wallpaper, and I'm going to click set. Look, very, very clean looking buttons. No more gloss, no more shine. So I'm going to click set both. Apple's doing this cool thing with the background where when you move the phone, the, the icons move. It's very, very subtle. Uh, the icons move along with the background you might not even be able to tell. It gives this interesting effect that the icons are sort of floating on top of the background. Again, it's so incredibly subtle, you barely notice it. They'll probably ratchet that up or down as the betas progress here in iOS 7. So let's go back into the settings, see what else we have here. Again, we're gonna use that back gesture, which is really nice. And we've got Notification Center here, which has been redone. And let's pull that down. What this lets you do here in the Notification Center, you've got three tabs, which is Today, All, and Missed. You still can't swipe away notifications like you can in Android, unfortunately. But this is kind of a cool little glance glanceable view that lets you see what you're doing today, see all of your notifications, all of your missed notifications. You can't swipe between them like, again, you can in Android. And what's also kind of neat about the notification shade is that it's slightly translucent. So if you have a background that has some color on it, you'll kind of see through it. And, and Apple's really doing a lot of this Gaussian blur kind of effect where it looks like a layer on top of another layer, which is just a really nice uh, UI touch. So let's go back into here. We've got some new settings for Notification Center. Not going to go through them too much in depth. Look at these new toggles, kind of these basic toggles. They don't look metallic anymore. They look just sort of graphical, very, very simple and clean. Uh, we can turn various things off in the notification center and so forth. We've got a new thing called control center, which the jailbreaking community has been doing for a very long time. Swiping up from the bottom will bring up this quick control. And just like the notification center, it will inherit the color of the background. So if we're on the home screen here, more blue, you get that kind of bluish look. If you're in settings, it's kind of white. You swipe up, you get a kind of white look. And from here, you can toggle on Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, do not disturb, screen lock, and you can see everything that is here. You get some quick shortcuts down here to stuff that you cannot change, such as the uh, camera calculator, no idea what the heck that is, and flashlight. So this will bring you into your, uh, obviously, your, your calculator. If you tap and hold on this, nothing happens. You cannot change them. We'll go into the camera in a minute. 
Another thing that's been changed is the multitask UI, and this is again another thing that the jailbreaking community has been doing for eons. Uh, they've been making this card view, and Apple finally did it. Uh, so what you get here, and let's let's start from the beginning here. If you double tap the home button, first you start off with your most recently used app, and then if you swipe over, you get three things on the screen at the time at a time. This looks a lot like Windows Phone to me, uh, and it's. It's a little bit low on utility because you can only see four things on the screen at, at a time. Actually, one, two, three, four, five to be exact. And just like in the multitask switchers of the jailbreak community, you can swipe up and exit the app. And it shows you a full screen preview of these things, which is really nice looking. Not exactly sure it's more efficient than the old icon thing, but it's definitely a lot more beautiful. Let's go into Safari because the browser has been changed. And speaking of the browser, when we go up here to the web address bar, you're going to see the new the new keyboard here, uh, which is really nice. So we are going to go to pocketnow.com. But interestingly, the keyboard only will work if the developer supports it. So for example, if we go into the Facebook app, which obviously has not been updated uh, for iOS 7 yet, and we go over here and we search, you're going to see the old keyboard. Uh, so developers have to update their app to include the new keyboard, which is a little bit of a shame, uh, but it's just going to take some time. So I'm going to use the multitask switcher to go back here to Pocket Now. And we've got a new UI here for the browser. We've got these icons on the bottom, which again might be too much to the degree of simplicity because you might not know what they do until you actually press them. Here's the share button here, and from here you still can't share to third party like Instagram and other services that you might have on an Android phone, for example. We can do AirDrop, that's a new feature, and there's these other things that we can do here, plus print. Over here is your bookmarks, kind of used to that, and again, here's a place in the UI where you have that back button, so I can just do that swipe to go back, which is nice. I'm going to click Done up there. Down here we have a new tab UI that looks a lot like what Google Chrome does. Uh, so we've got this kind of 3D view. Then we've got a really cool listing of the iCloud uh, bookmarks if you have an iPad or another iPhone. And from here we can just tap on your tab and go to the next one and, and so forth. Browser performance is it's just fine. It's always good on iOS. As you move along the page here, um, you kind of get this full screen view, which is a really nice uh, thing. And over up here at the top, you see the address bar, it kind of collapses, and there's a little bit of translucency. It's very subtle, but if you look at where the AT&T logo is, you might see the images kind of tint the color. There we go. See the blue? So a lot of little subtle touches like this just make iOS delightful to use. And speaking of the AT&T logo, look at the new signal bars. They are no longer the standard, you know, bars. They're just circles with dots filled in with color. A little touch. I'm not sure that uh, they had to fix something that wasn't broken, uh, but, but, but there you have it. So let's go into the photo gallery. I know this is getting to be a long video, but there's just a lot to show you here. Go to the photo gallery. It's really interesting what they've done here because a lot of people have this situation, right, where you have so many pictures to go through them, you got to kind of flip, 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 and some people have thousands of pictures. So now they're, now the pictures are organized by all kinds of criteria. You start off by years, right? So we're going to go into years, and we're going to go into collections. And again, there's that back button there, which means that we can do the, do the swipe here sometimes, maybe, maybe not, maybe not in this screen. And from collections, we can drill down a little bit further, and then we go to moments, which is kind of cool because iOS is trying to group your photos into events, things that happened, kind of like H the HTC One does with events and some other phones can do. And from here, that's really as far as you can go. Uh, you can tap on a picture, you can zoom in, uh, you can click edit to, to click onto the editing tools and so forth, kind of what you're used to. And then you can back all the way out and you just have a nicer way to organize your photos, which is quite fantastic. Finally, let's take a look at the camera, see what they've done here. We've got a new UI here. I'm going to go into landscape, and we can either click on the name of the different type of photo here, which is uh, pano, square, photo, and video, or you can actually swipe. And there's really not that much more you can do with it. This is this is always has always been iOS's thing, uh, except that now we get real-time effects, something that Android has been doing forever, which is kind of cool, taking advantage of modern processing technology to be able to do this on the fly. It's kind of cool. So there's my hand with an effect and, and so forth. It takes photos. Pretty cool. 
And another thing here to show you is folders. Folders has been redone. This is what folders look like. They're just these gray, sort of rounded, circle-y square things. But the cool thing about folders now is that you can have multiple panels for folders, and there's no limit to how many panels you can have. We really haven't been able to hit the maximum. There's probably a maximum of, you know, 9 times 10, 90 icons in a folder. But this is actually kind of ugly, and unfortunately, another thing that they did not change with iOS 7 is that... Folders don't close when you click into an app. So if I go into Doodle Jump and then I go back to the home screen, folder stays open. That's not how it's supposed to go. Android has it right where it closes the folder. So overall, what we see here is a very, very deep redesign of everything that you know about iOS. And it really does look nice. It's incredibly different. Some people are going to have trouble with these neon colors, but you got to admit that there's this overall smoothness that has been brought to the operating system that just wasn't there before. It's definitely a lot more modern than before. However, there's no new functionality that really puts it ahead of the other operating systems out there, which is a huge leg up for Android and for Windows Phone because Android is focusing a lot on functionality with Google Now and bringing information to you before you know you need it. And Windows Phone, well, Windows Phone is entirely different, of course, on its own. So iOS 7, something to definitely look forward to. It's not a paradigm shift. It's just a refinement, really, on pretty much the entire experience, which is a great thing. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.